Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Don Whitman back with us, joining us live here on the Zoomcast and podcast from Whitman Technologies. And again, that's Whitman Technology, W-I-T-T-M-A-N, technology.com is his website. And we'll talk today about uh, the types of people he's helping, especially executives, executives in training, uh, really to help them with their business and uh, to expose them, uh, give them more better exposure, I should say, there on LinkedIn and so much more in turn. It's all about profitability, and he's here as a consultant to help us with that. How are you, Donald? Very good, thank you. Cool. You, know, you have a nice, beautiful day to have a podcast. And, uh... It sure is. Welcome to the beautiful spring weather for now in the New York, Connecticut area. Uh, new time listeners today, Donald, what do you want them to know about yourself? Well, I provide services for uh, for executives, uh, individual professionals, lawyers, and companies on how to use LinkedIn to uh, expand their opportunities. And uh, today we'll talk a little bit about job seekers and probably executive job seekers because uh, that's uh, currently what the market is looking for. I mean, uh, it just came out that the uh, a lot of people from the age of 55 to 65 have been staying out of the uh, job market uh, ever since uh, COVID came on. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a group that most of the industry uh, really wants because they're well-seasoned executives and things like, you know, and they they have a lot of experience that a lot of companies have lost over time and they're trying to get it back. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but but so so basically, you know, the market has come back. I mean, we just had a great uh, April jobs report where we're, uh, what is it, 3.4% unemployment, which is uh, just about an all-time low. Um, we had 253,000 uh, additional. And at, even at 3.4% to the April, uh, was it the March? February and January um, employment statistics actually were readjusted uh, $150,000, 150,000 people less, and we're still doing very well. The un- underemployment rate um, or sometimes the labor force participation rate is 62.6, mm-hmm. which is one tenth from the highest it's ever been. Wow. Well, one, well you actually want to go negatives. I mean, so it's, 62.6 um and you know, the best is like 60 so that that's a great number but there's still a lot of people out of the market that have not uh come back and i'm um, i'm actually i just uh started working with a group we're going to do a big course for uh senior executives to uh come back into the market mm-hmm. um and part of it has been the uh how much more work they have to do to get get those get the same level of jobs back that they previously had. Yeah. Um, it's much more scrutiny, even though companies want them, they're asking for much more information. They uh, really need to do very well because there's still a lot of competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, what people don't really understand about the job market um, is that um, they really ha- the, as much as we've seen a lot of promo- big promotional raises over the last year or so, and a lot of people coming back in, there's still a lot of people that really haven't uh, been promoted or gotten the money that they deserve for the number of years experience. Mm-hmm. So what's really happening is not only is there competition for the 55 to 65 range, which has always been a tough range, mm-hmm. um, other people are looking to um, get promoted, get more money, and things like that. So the market is is quite advanced in the and and what they're looking for. And even from a year or two ago, you know, LinkedIn profiles are are really not up to date because they're not meeting the search criteria that a lot of recruiters and companies are looking for uh, to make their life easier. I mean, the beginning of COVID, I think it's been well documented that the number of HR professionals that companies have, they let a lot go. 
and they really uh, don't have a lot of staff to deal with the uh, the hiring sequence, the hiring sequences that goes on. So it's taken much longer, and they're being they're being they're have less skills to be able to use LinkedIn and and resumes and other job sites to actually find the people they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So this has been a, an ongoing thing uh, where the executives, the senior executives that are trying to get back into the job market um, need to you know, really focus on keywords, what they're trying to do, what industry they're trying to work in. Um, you know, we, we've, it's always been an issue with the, the right keywords mm -hmm. and the right job requirements. But the problem is, is a lot of the keywords that uh, executives and other people have been choosing are really um, not for the right level. I mean, the, the number one complaint I get from senior senior executives in the 55 to 65 range, even a little lower, mm -hmm. is that they keep getting uh, contacted for jobs below the level they're looking for. And that's because they're they're coming up in searches uh or positions lower than what they're looking for because they're using the wrong keywords so so they're in doing that they're actually fighting with other people who are trying to prom get promoted into some of those mid-tier positions mm -hmm. so it, it it so really having a clear you know well done linkedin profile helps them land faster Right helps them helps rec recruiters because what are you doing with your LinkedIn profile? You're you're basically giving a making a marketing document, really, for recruiters and companies to hire you. And if your marketing document is not appropriate for the position that you're looking for, and 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 for a, a level that's lower than you, what's going to happen? You're going to get contact for positions that are below what you're looking for, and that's a you know that's an ongoing challenge. You know, it's uh, in in all the meetings I've been having in the last three or four months, that has been the number one problem. People are getting contacted for positions below what they want, even though they're 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 trying to really get there and just going in there, weeding it out. Says, okay, what is this for? Where is it? What <clears throat> would you really describe as your you know this keyword or or function that you do is that really at the level you're at and they look at me sideways going well i do that yeah but is that really what your position's supposed to do mm -hmm. you i understand it's what you want i mean it's what you do but is it is it the main things that you do right you you're you're, you're casting this wide net and not prioritizing what what are the big things you do Right. What what do you really do for your companies that they really want as a senior executive? Right. Those things you need to put in there. Yes, you do these secondary things and they're really good to put in there, but you can't make them your primary, your primary skills. Your primary skills are as a senior executive. Yeah. And if you mess in, not putting that in the appropriate order. And not emphasizing those really high-level skills that you need for uh, as a senior executive, you're not getting found, and it's taking you taking them much longer to land. And it, it's it's quite the discussion. Yeah. Um, you know, it it says, but I do all this. I do all this. It says, yes, you do all that, but so does the person below you and the person below that. So so. You, you know, what do you do that's unique as an executive that your subordinates don't do, right? Mm -hmm. you, it's much more organizational skill, much more leadership skills. You know, how do you get things done? How do you focus on what you want to do? How do you focus on the money? As a very senior executive, what is your job? Yeah. Right? It's to bring money in, right? Yeah. I, I, when I worked for MCI a long time ago, which MCI is part of Verizon. That was is what's called money coming in. A senior executive's job, no matter what you talk about, it is about money coming in. <laughs> and, 
And you, and those are the things that companies want to hear about. What yeah. have you done? What successes have you had to bring money in the door or to, you know, mm-hmm. money, bringing money in there can mean many things. It can be new clients, you know, can, can, can be new products, can be lots of things. But the focus is, you know, is money coming in. And that's what companies are very focused on right now. Right. Consider that everybody's trying to recover from the pandemic, you know, and, you know, they're trying to hire people that they need. But the number one thing that most of these companies are looking for is bringing more money in and your achievements in your resume as well as LinkedIn needs to focus on what you can do for them. Right. The old WIFM statement, you know, what's in it for me? Yeah. Right. And companies want to know if I'm going to hire you, what are you going to do for me? How are you going to get that money in there? How are you going to get the client, my, my clients and I mean, my clients to do business with me and convince them that uh, this were the right company to do business with? And also, how are you going to get your subordinates to run, walk down the road with you in order to get mm-hmm. make this a success? So it, it, it's. You know, and they want to hear that. And there's so f- much fluff in what people say in their resumes and, and their job co- job se- searching collateral and other stuff that, you know, so- sometimes you have to be much straighter mm-hmm. about what you say. Yeah. So it's, you know, you the, the, the recruiter or the company doesn't have to go fishing through all those papers. What can I do for you? This yeah. is it. How am I going to get there? This is how I got there. Mm-hmm. This is what I did in the past where I was very successful. Yeah. Now this, you know, those are the things that companies look at. How how are you going to help? Me? And that's the way people get hired. Is how are you going to help me? That's why we, we we're, we're seeing. I think we've talked several times before about the fact that forty percent of the of the workforce is going a consultant or contingent employment, mm-hmm. and that's because people aren't sure. How how you know how those people that they're hiring is going to, going to produce, right? So a lot of that workforce, whether temporary or permanent, has gone contingent or consultant, so that the companies can feel comfortable bringing you in, seeing if you can do the job, and when you do the job, make a choice. And some some senior positions have absolutely com- become consultant oriented and, and contingent oriented. Mm-hmm. But still, the companies are still looking for how you gonna how have you succeeded in the past? How does that map to what you want to do for us? And how does that how does how do you're gonna take that and make us successful? And that's the way you know I've I've ta- talked to a number of private equity uh, companies and saying you know make my life easy. Tell me what you can do for me. Yeah. Right. Make it simple. Be straightforward. You know. That's what we need, and if you can, and, and we want you as an executive to be that way, right? Yeah. You know, let's let let's. How are you going to do it? Man? You know, yeah. make make it simple, make it simple, stupid, and this is how it is. So th- that's sort of the way the, the the market I'm seeing for senior executives going is. What have you done in the past? How are you going to how are you going to translate that into what you can do for me today? How are you going to help my company succeed? And be clear what level you're 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 trying to be at, right? So that everybody understands this and there's less misconceptions, and that makes for much better discussion mm-hmm. with the companies and recruiters, and 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 you're both clear, and it makes it makes it easier, right? Is less fumbling around and there's less apologies that, oh, I'm, never, I'm sorry, we misunderstood. You know, everyone, you know, the hiring teams are much smaller mm-hmm. than they used to be. So that you have to make it make it clear. And when you do that, you know, you're going to be contacted. I mean, a lot of, you know, the the contingent working on a contingent basis whether it be W two or or, a, or or an outside consultant is is a reality of where we are. Mm-hmm. So most people need to be prepared for. Okay, these are the keywords I need for my employment to be an employee. 
the, these are the kinds of keywords I need to be as a consultant, blend those together so that I can get in the door, either get full-time employment or contract employment and get through to the companies where I want to, where I want to work. And people aren't taking the whole picture, right? Mm -hmm. I just want to be a full-time employee as an executive. Well, you know, that's just not where things are today. And when you look at both worlds together, right? Because again, the 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 average position, the executive, the average executive position usually takes one to three attempts to find the right person. Right. And I, I can tell you from the last time I did it, um, there were three people before me that failed. Yeah. Right. When I was went for C, uh, chief technology officer, mm -hmm. and you know that you know the, the companies are really you know if they're going through that they're really concerned that they don't want to go through this cycle again. It's already been a year and a half, and and I was involved in you know I got I got talked to in all all three searches, and. Uh, they finally decided to come back and talk to me after a year and a half. And, uh, you know, I got the job, but what people were saying was not correct and things that they could not really do. Yeah. And it took three to six months for them to find out that, yeah, I can, you know, the guy can sort of do it, but really can't do it. Mm -hmm. And, that's why a lot of companies are hiring on a contingent basis because of failures with their own organizations and how they're bringing stuff in and how they want to succeed and how they want, you know, and the disagreement of, uh, within the teams about who sh should this person really be. Yeah. So th that's happening a lot out there. And I'm, I'm really, you know, help it, trying to help executives and, and not necessarily the highest C-level people. I mean, Mm -hmm. VPs and even directors are having trouble with, you know, properly communicating what they can do for companies and what level they want to be at. So that that's become, you know, a much bigger deal because they have less and less hiring expertise mm -hmm. within the companies. They're relying on smaller groups and, and trying to get the same work done with less people which is what's been happening since the beginning of COVID. And people, they said, I'm not going to go into the office. I'm not going to do this. And so that's a continuation of that. But people are, but they're, they're still, the hiring is still quite, is reasonably aggressive. Yeah. I mean, the, um, there's still, you know, 9.6 million job openings from the JOLTS, from the current JOLTS report was only a few days old. And uh, it's unbelievable that it, it, it's still that high. Yeah. Um, you know, you'll be, we go and look at the um, hires. You know, the, the hiring rate is 4% of workforce, which is very high. Now, if you go back 10 years, I mean, those rates were at 3.3%, 3.4% rather than 4%. 4 so it's, it's still much higher than it has been in history. The turnover rate, um, if I go back to the, the turnover rate is, the turnover rate is still, total separations is what, 3.8. And that's still very high, but the but people are leaving to find another position. So that's still happening. And, you know, that's part of the, what we talk about, the, the discontent of different companies we talked a little bit about that about uh, emotional intelligence or the eiq stuff like that people are trying to find a better place to work where it's less stress better from a lifestyle and all that is you know is all, all that is becoming more and more important for executives who are looking to come back in or are looking to get promoted they want a better environment um you know be better relationship with uh, work and and uh, home life, work life balance stuff. All that stuff is starting to come back, and, and is you know 
you know, back in the seventies and eighties where, you know, you go in and do the grind and things like that. You know, you can't get, you can't get daycare. Daycare is extremely expensive. And if you have two or three kids. I know it doesn't make sense. I know it's 25. I, I have my kids are six and eight now, but I remember it was like $2,500 a month for one of them. And they give you like a kid discount, but that's like $5,000 a month to send your kids to daycare. It's like, what, what? Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, it, it, it's uh, I think Massachusetts in the northeast middle is, is like the most expensive. You know, it, it, it's above twenty thousand dollars a year for daycare for one kid, and on, on average, and Connecticut is I think fourteen thousand. Uh, parts of New York are fourteen to sixteen thousand. And, you know, that's an average of where you are. I mean, upstate New York is a lot cheaper than the, the, the New York City and Long Island area, which are which still quite expensive. It's become a major deal. A lot of people aren't coming back. Part of the executives that aren't coming back is, is basically work-life balance. And some of the executives who have, you know, kids are still in school, right? You can't leave, I think, by law in New York and Connecticut. You can't have the kid come home from school alone unless they're over 13. Right? You, can, you, can, you can have the, the police can come over and do that. So you, you, you have to have daycare for kids in school for a lot of years or have some program they stay at um, until you're able to come home. So the you know daycare is doing less hours or child care is less hours. After school care or after school activities, uh, don't last till most people get home in the tri-state area where we are. So that that whole that whole mashup of limitations to what people can can do with children, and you know, children children are back in, in the picture again, much more than it was before. Um, after COVID, you know, it, it seems to be the quite a few people are looking for. You know, work-life balance, a better lifestyle. They want to have kids. They don't want to have to worry about running around like a crazy person anymore, which is hard to avoid these days. But yeah, and that's why a lot of them are staying home, right? Because it is so expensive. Mm -hmm. you, and a lot of companies don't give you the room to be able to ask, oh, there's, there's a crisis at daycare. I have to go get my son, mm -hmm. right? You know, that, that's a long commute when you're, you know, in Connecticut or Westchester County or out in Long Island when something goes wrong, yeah. you know, and, you know, if companies aren't giving you the leeway to do that or, um, you know, the ability to, to go and run. I mean, when I was at one of the previous companies, we had very, very high percentage. We, we were, I think, in the mid 60s percent of the companies were women. And you now what happened? You had bad weather, right? It snowed. Yeah. <laughs> what, are, what are you going to do, right? Mm -hmm. School's closed. Daycare's closed, right? And, and you know, we, you know, talking to the, the women, he says, "Well, what do we need to do? How, yeah. how how can we how can we help the women be able to work from home without having to kill all their vacation?" during these bad snowstorms and it wasn't only in the northeast we had there's an office out in the midwest to also out in nebraska and in there's been offices in other places like montreal and things like that where there's a lot of snow and so you know we put together a whole environment and what is very so much what microsoft teams is today so that people can work from home you, your your computer can would host your your office phone. You can video conference from home. You can do all these features. Much of what's today, I mean, this is this is more than ten years ago. We did this, and they could feel part of the business. And and you got the work was done. You don't have to feel pressured. Totally. And you know you can, you you can go and say, okay, I'm in a meeting, or yet I'll, I'll be back at this time, so that people knew when they looked at look you up on on the system that says okay she's busy till this time and mm -hmm. you can go and, and and message her 
without go- driving your cell phone crazy. You can do it on the computer system. And, you know, they'll, they'll come back in. So it, it's almost like being in the office. Totally. Right? And being at home. Mm-hmm. That's what people are looking for. They're looking for their freedoms to be able to work well from home, the office, from anywhere. I, I mean, I, I've had I've had to do work from London, from Amsterdam, you know, you know, and on my vacations. I, I mean, I mean, I've had to work from. I mean, I was down in Dominican Republic, and they're starting calling executive meetings. Oh no! Right, you have to be able to participate if you're a senior exec, you know, and you have to, you know, you have to be able to do that stuff mm-hmm. when, when, you know, when the stuff hits the fan. So that work-life balance, you know, needs to be done, needs to be accepted. And I, I, I think people would come back if, if a lot of companies were more willing to help in that situation. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I, I think the part two is that, you know, with the salt tax and stuff like that, a lot, a lot of, comp- a lot of, uh, People are, it's costing them a lot more money to go back into the office, particularly back to New York City, right? I mean, working from home saves you a couple of percent on your, on your salary. Yeah. So, you know, and, uh, you know, and the real estate tax mm-hmm. is also an issue depending on where you are. So all in all, you know, a lot of people need a break and you know, the government needs to be able to let you write off more daycare because it's certainly not covering like it used to do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that whole balance needs to be worked out. And I think, that, you know, a lot more people would come back to work. Yeah. And anyway, that's what I'm looking at. You know, well, I'm, thank I'm, you. So if you, sorry, if, we must go. Would you mind telling us how we could reach you? Donald? Sure. Thank you. Sure. Um, you can get me by a few emails. You can get me Don at WhitmanTechnology.com or Don at LinkedInGuy.com. You can get me on LinkedIn at Donald J. Whitman, which is W-I-T-T-M-A-N. Uh, more than happy to chat with you. And my website is WhitmanTechnology.com. And I would love to answer any questions you may have about this topic. Thank you so much, Donald. Have a great day. Thank you, Jill. Take care. We'll talk soon. Enjoy the beautiful day for sure. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.